but if you have your bible let's go together to isaiah chapter 1 i'm going to share briefly a few thoughts and we're going to pray isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18 19 verse 18 and 19 come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they're as red as crimson they shall be as wool if you are willing somebody say willing and obedient somebody say obedient you shall eat the good of the land i want to speak to you a brief message that will be titled the good of the land the good of the land god wants us to eat of the good of the land we're going to discuss that in just a minute but before that let's break down this verse into three simple parts the first one is god says come now and let us reason together and then he describes about people's sins how he can turn their sins into as good as white as snow and if they are as scarlet as rimson they will turn into a wool when the first thing i want us to focus on right for just a moment right now is this is that if you want to live a blessed life you have to make a decision to come to god when you have sinned to come to god when you have sinned many people do not come to God when they commit a mistake they feel like their mistakes stand between them and God and God is not willing to move that and God is not willing to deal with that without punishing them and here God tells us to a sinful nation he, if you read Isaiah chapter 1 in the beginning and you see God is pretty upset really upset the way he calls them and what people did to God and how they offended him and then God comes to them and you would think God would say guys you know what get off of me leave me alone get away I don't want to know you but God throws an invitation and he says come let us reason together he says let's talk come you messed up you're guilty you're ashamed but don't run from me run to me come to me let's talk and God says this is what I promise to do God doesn't promise to punish God doesn't promise to get even God says and I promise at the end of our meeting if your sin are as bad as red as crimson they will be as white as wool means says God says you will leave and walk out meeting with me being clean and being better and I will forgive you and I will change you now that I'm, I'll come I mean imagine a, a judge you just you know had a, a ticket and the judge sends you a letter and says come to a meeting I give you a promise after you leave not only your record will be clean you'll end up with some money in your pocket you're like oh yeah I'm coming I'm gonna get more tickets and come right you will be motivated to come because you know that he's not out to punish you but he's out to forgive you from the beginning the Bible says when Adam sinned in Genesis there is a verse in Genesis that I want to read to you in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 so Adam sins and he hides and they heard the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden and the Lord God called to Adam and said where are you now we all know that God is omnipresent. Omni means everywhere, present means present. So God is present everywhere. So here is Adam eating of the fruit of the tree. Do you think God was busy repairing few galaxies? That he didn't notice it? Do you think that God didn't see that Adam was eating the forbidden? Of course God did. God saw that Adam disobeyed him so God is there watching everything and God next day still shows up to the meeting that he has regular with Adam knowing Adam has committed sin God does not cancel a meeting with Adam because of Adam's sin God still shows up the next day and says hey where are you Adam I know you messed up but let's not cancel the meeting see Adam saw his sin as a reason to stop being with God God didn't see Adam's sin as a reason to stop meeting with him I want to tell you something this morning you can let your sin distract you from God but God does not see your sin as an excuse not to meet with you and not to love you God does not see your sin big enough 
that he says I won't meet with you get away from me don't come to me again don't pray to me why because you've committed sin God says I know you've committed sin but I also know I am the only one who can help you with it come let's reason together and if you come you will walk out white you will walk out clean you will walk out forgiven you will walk out different where are you why are you hiding well Adam says I've sinned I am ashamed I'm embarrassed I'm not good enough for you God and God says who so who told you that I want to remember I want you to remember this about sin when you commit sin and we all do everyone here is not perfect no matter how we pretend to be perfect and no matter how many good quotes we post on our Instagram and Snapchat and our Facebook no matter what we vote no matter how what bumper sticks we wear and what kind of t-shirts we wear no matter how good we talk Christianese at the end of the day we are people who are being sanctified and we are growing in our relationship with God and we commit sometimes things that we are not proud of and things that the enemy uses against us and says you shouldn't go to prayer today why because you have messed up no 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 God says come let's reason together let's talk God comes to the same meeting with Adam knowing Adam has committed sin that means when you fall when you trip when you slip when you sip when you fail God still expects you at five in the morning at Good News Church God still expects you in your devotion time you're like Lord I'm not coming today why because I have failed and God says why not because Lord I can't God says where are you and God comes at that morning time that you have set up with God and you say Lord I can't because I feel ashamed I feel guilty and God shows up there and says where are you I know what you did Don't, I'm God but I'm still here why aren't you here I chose not to make your sin big enough for me to miss a meeting why don't you push your sin aside and say God you are bigger than my sin and you're the only one who can fix it amen, amen. don't run from God run to God don't hide from God hide in God don't cover your sin confess it and don't blame others get broken instead my friends we can all choose to run to God or run from God we can all choose to hide from God or we can hide in God when we commit something we're not happy about we can all choose to cover our sin like Adam or we can choose to confess our sin like David we can all choose to blame others like Adam or we can choose to say God I am broken God I have a contrite heart God I am messed up God I I need you and God comes in with his mercy and his grace and restores us and gives us a second chance restores us and gives us grace and power to be willing and obedient and actually at the end lets us eat of the good of the land somebody say amen I want to let you know one thing God says come God cannot make you come God cannot force you to come God and all his power who is all-powerful holds the earth with his word God who created galaxies the fries the scientist's brain God who created the million things in seven days he created things that it takes us six thousand years and we still cannot crack the things that God has created they're so fabulous and amazing yet this God has given you a dignity in giving you a choice to come he can't drive you he can't pull you he can't make you he can't force you manipulate you or make you come he invites you to come but at the end he can't make you come if he could make you come if some of you are asking God make me or God is powerful he will force me did God force you to tithe did God tithe for you no you didn't come here because God forced you to come you came here because you made a choice when it comes to love choice is expression of love if you're a girl in here and you had a, some kind of a stalker that fell in love with you and was pursuing you passionately and you couldn't stand the name of this person not only his order or or his presence or his habit you, you, their, their name give you shivers because you're like I'd never want to see that name at all imagine imagine this person that you are ah, no imagine being forced to live with him then you will need antidepressant pills <laughs> imagine being forced to marry him 
Now I know people in Muslim countries do it well because they have no other choice. It's death or that. So they're like, uh, I'll rather choose that today. But imagine for yourself, I mean, that, would, would that be love on their end? Of course not. God cannot force you to be with him. He says, come, but you are the one. I am the one who has to make a choice. I hear people complain all the time and say, well, if your God is so loving, why does he send people to hell? He doesn't send nobody to hell. God just does not take him to heaven. That's all. Why does he take him to heaven? Well, would that be loving to force you spend eternity with someone who you cannot tolerate for five minutes? How can that be loving? For a God to force you to be in his presence against your own will. God is love and he gives you free choice and he gives you your space and therefore in heaven there's nobody in heaven who's going to be there who said God made me here or God forced me here I don't want to be here but I just God just manipulated me lied to me and he dragged me here I don't want to be with God I never wanted on earth I always wanted to do my own thing I never wanted to worship God I never wanted to have his somebody telling me what to do I grew up with my parents they're constantly telling me what to do and now God tells me what to do I don't want none of that I just want to live my own life get off of my back get off of my I just want to do my own thing forget about God I don't want nothing with that I want to tell you something if you have that kind of opinion or that kind of a life you are in for a treat you're going to spend eternity without God don't worry about the bad part about hell. Look up at the positive side. You're going to have no God to worry about. Completely free from God. Completely. No church to attend on Sunday. No Bible. No, no home group leader to breathe on your neck all the time while you're reading a Bible. While you're not coming to morning prayer. Imagine the whole evangelism completely out of the picture. Imagine you're doing whatever you want and God will give you such a respect of saying I love you. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to be with me but my love for you cannot force me to make you do it because that won't be love. So this is what's going to happen. I am going to take people who want me, who love me and who believe in me with me for eternity and you on the other hand I'll give you your free space. And actually, in fact, I am going to remove out of where you're going to be, I'm going to remove light completely. Why? Because light is associated with me. Light is where I am. And so I don't want you to be reminded of me when you are in hell. I'm going to remove every essence of light. So for eternity, you won't see a glimpse of light. Because I don't want you to be reminded of me and have ill feelings. Hope is my attribute and so out of hell I'll remove every essence of hope. I'm going to remove every essence of smile, every essence of good news. Why? Because these are who I am and since you cannot stand me, I respect that. I will give you your space. I'll remove those things. Why? So you won't even have to rem be reminded of me. I don't want you to, to, uh, to judge me that I'm pushing myself on you for eternity. Have your space. I grieve that you choose that choice. But my love doesn't permit me to use my power to overrule you. And therefore, you're going to have to choose that life. My friends, I want to challenge you today. God's love is the most powerful source and force. And it's the scariest thing in the world. God's love scares me. Because His love draws me like a magnet. And at the same time, His love will let me do excuse me whatever the heck I want his love will let me take a razor blade and while God will scream and say please don't yet he can't take the razor out of my mouth while I swallow that and bleed to death God will put the Holy Spirit the angels he will draw me in but at the end it is my choice to take it or not and here God tells to sinners come he says, I won't judge you. I will love you. I will forgive you. But I can't make you come. Guys, God can't make you pray. God can make you serve Him. It is your choice. He loves you with the love you can never understand. God's love is so that when you come and you many times you will feel it. You will feel this, this, this being that knows you so good and loves you so deep there is a sense of approval there's a sense of acceptance there is a sense of this love that you can never receive from anywhere else or anything else and I don't know how people can reject that 
being able to be with him in heaven not just floating with little wings and singing kumbaya or having a harp and always worshiping people always think of heaven as a as a place where you always worship bible doesn't say in heaven you'll always worship bible says in heaven we'll be able imagine get to know him who created something in six days that it takes us thousands years to wrap our mind around it being able to hang out with him who created in six days that which is fabulous amazing in six days imagine being with him imagine being able to look in his eyes being, being able to know a little bit more different facets of him imagine creating with him ruling with him reigning with him. imagine being in his presence it's it's mind-blowing for eternity it never gets boring no night because God has so much to do God says we don't need a night no sleep who needs a sleep you're gonna be with him your body is not gonna need that no mortgages all the houses built by him there's no mortgage payment utility no clogged up toilets no sewer clockages nobody turning off your internet none of that stuff God says all of it is prepared for everything is taken care of I just want you to be with me and I want you to just watch let's do it together how in the world can you say no to that kind of life but people still choose to and only for one reason because people have authority issues some even create atheism not because they have a logical proof that God doesn't exist it's because acknowledging God exists makes you either subject to him or rebel against him and we want God in our image instead of confronting conforming our image to God's God says come when you commit sin come when you fall come let's reason together I love you I want to fix the sin issue I want to resolve it I want you to come I want to speak personal right now when you make a mistake when you do something that you're not proud of still come to your prayer of time time of prayer still pick up your Bible still come to church the devil will lie to you maybe you fall into smoking maybe you fell into drinking maybe you looked at pornography maybe you looked at you you've done something that you're not proud of and you say if I come to church like that I'm a hypocrite my friend does a sick person become a hypocrite by going to the hospital no does an overweight person becomes a hypocrite by going to the gym no my friend where do sinners go the church to be changed <laughs> to prayer to be changed some people come to our church and they say I know who goes to the church bunch of hypocrites I'm like if you find a church where hypocrites don't go to do not join it because you will be the first hypocrite that will join that church oh I know that church but you can see in the parking lot there was one person smoking praise God that means the sinners come to our church what do sinners do sinners do what sinners do fish swim birds fly sinners sin it's completely normal our church is a place where everyone is welcome and nothing is impossible when you fall when you trip run to God don't run from God am I giving you license to sin oh no because nobody has gotten better by staying away from God I always say this phrase you can never take a dirty rag and clean clean a dirty window the only way to clean a dirty window is with a clean rag if you come to God the way you are you've fallen you've made a mistake and then God cleanses you you know what the second thing that happens is God says you become willing and obedient see when you get forgiven you become obedient it's weird how it happens but when your car is washed you avoid puddles have you ever had that your car is dirty and you're literally looking for puddles like Lord Jesus guide me in the path of puddles oh I feel so good you look for mud you just want it to be dirty you just you, that's the, just the way you are same thing the moment you wear your nice dress or you put on a suit what do you do you walk and you see a little puddle you see rain and you right away feel this comfortable you want to protect that but the moment your clothes are dirty you don't care you walk in the poop you lay in the grass you play with that dog his saliva goes all around you You're like I don't care lick at me lick me because I just don't care is this the way we are clean when you're clean you want to be clean when you're dirty you don't want to be clean you want to be dirtier that's just the way it works and God says come to me when you get cleaned up God says you become willing and obedient obedience is 
carrying out the will and the word of another person. You know most of us can be obedient rarely we can be obedient and not be willing but most of us we are willing and not obedient when I was younger I used to really pray to God a lot for this one word I remember even fasting and I asked God God I want to hear your voice because to me what it meant is that God will come to me and reveal how many galaxies are in the universe when I asked God to speak to me about his voice I felt like he will come and reveal to me what your social security is kind of like he'll tell me some secrets you know what's Barack Obama's income or you know where, where what what is uh the ISIS is hiding or some kind of a secret and then when I started to grow a little bit more in the Lord I started to reveal find out one thing about God he usually speaks to you about things you don't want to hear about so I have stopped actually for a while asking God to speak to me sometimes I say Lord please speak to me less because when he speaks and it's things like these you know you look at your car and then the Lord puts somebody on your heart to give your car it's like no 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 no, Lord no no then you know you look at your iPad and then you see somebody saying that they want an iPad and the Lord puts somebody on your heart like no 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 God don't speak to me like this I remember when I was a teenager and uh I had a youth service and I, I had a, a big passion. I shared this story a few times outside of our church. I had a big passion to wear sweatpants, like sport pants, into the church. I had no concept of clothing or none of that stuff. I, I, for me, comfort, that, that's all that I wanted. And one particular time was these blue, very wide sweatpants. I don't know why I love them. But they reminded me of T.G. Jakes because they were like, pff, pff. they're so wide, they're so big. They're like five my size, but I love them. I kept them for years. This particular time I put them on and I'm walking out of the uh, the house, took my Bible and I'm a youth pastor about 17 years of age and my dad saw me wearing those sweatpants and my dad says where are you going? And I said to church. My dad says not in those pants. And I said oh yeah in those pants I'm going. And that's exactly with that kind of attitude I went in, got into my car and I was like man my dad is so traditional. When is he gonna like snap out of his Pentecostalism and like go into the free spirit where the Bible says God doesn't look at the clothes but at the heart, heart. I'm about to turn on the car and the still small voice of the Holy Spirit says, Vlad, go change the pants. And I said, Jesus, you said in your word right here, you look at the heart. God, you don't give a flip. You don't give a care. It doesn't matter to you what I wear. You said that. God says, I also said in my word, honor your father and your mother. And I said, Lord, I'll go and I'll change my pants under one condition. If my dad gets a diarrhea and goes to the bathroom, so that when I change it he doesn't see me and doesn't give me that look mm -hmm, I told you that's right it's about time you learn the rules in this house and obey your children I don't care that you're pastor it's the kind of look I didn't want to see from my dad and I felt that the Holy Spirit prompted my heart is of lad the only reason I want you to change your pants is for that look so you will die <laughs> So your pride will die. So that your will will get broken. <laughs> I literally at that moment I felt like I would have been hanged on the cross and I would have not felt the pain that I felt by going to my house. God didn't answer my prayer. My dad was sitting there and my dad instead of running like a, to the prodigal son and embracing me and son you know I'll give you everything. My dad gave me that look you know that uh-huh I told you that's right you don't ever don't ever wear that to church. And like a lamb and land to the slaughter. I went upstairs changed my pants, walked down and honestly <laughs> I think that humility lesson brought so much change and after that moment I said Lord don't speak to me Lord <laughs> just don't speak to me God because we all want to hear God's voice but God doesn't always speaks in a way that actually you want to hear he uses your consciousness he does speaks those things you know you come to church and that you're looking at that your paycheck and you know you should tithe and Go, God speak to me and God says give. No, no, no. Something else God. Say something else. You live with your girlfriend and God speak to me. Oh God speak to me. God says well I don't think you should be living with your girlfriend. It's causing fornication. I know Lord but say something else. Please say something nice. You know you hate your parents. They're really getting on your nerves. They hurt you and you keep coming to God and say Lord God just, just speak to me some promises. Just, 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 just massage my heart Lord God and God says forgive. Say no. Say something else Lord leave that forgiveness for someone else change do something else the problem with us we have is that many times when God speaks we hear we just don't do it we are willing but not obedient we're like I want to do it I just not gonna do it and the last thing God says when you come to you to me when you commit sin 
Um, I'm going to cleanse your life and I'm going to cause you to be willing and obedient. And then third thing is God says you will eat of the good of the land. Eat of the good of the land. And this actually what it means that God says to us is that we will be able to enjoy the good things in our life. Eat of the good of the land. We live today in the land of United States and we live in a wonderful land um, and there are good things in this land and there are challenging things in this land and God says when you come to me and when you are willing and obedient you will be able to enjoy the good things that our land provides. Now it's very important to understand one concept about this. Few, few simple thoughts I want you to remember. One is you have to clean up your mind from traditional thinking. Clean up your mind from traditional thinking. Because when it comes to this verse, many people talk about the idea that God wants to forgive you of your sin. God wants you to be obedient. But then when God says that I want you to eat of the good of the land, many people they just kind of get confused here and they get lost here. What does that mean? Oh that simply means that God wants me to eat of his word. That's actually not what this means. Though you can apply this spiritually but it means that materially, emotionally, mentally, physically and financially God wants you to live a life that is in abundance, that is overflowing and that is more than enough. But the problem that happens with us is that we can be obedient to God, we can come to God when we commit sin, we can live a life on obedience but if there is a mental block here of tradition that tells us that it is not God's will to bless you, it is not God's will to heal you, it is not God's will to free you but God wants to use cancer for his purposes, God wants you to be poor because poverty means humility, God wants you to you God wants to use that to bring that into your life and then you become confused like well God wants me to eat of the good of the land but then I hear the testimony where one person said that God you know used cancer in their life and the cancer is the best thing that happened to them. I heard the testimony this week where one person said that and I understand what they mean. God was speaking to them in the time of their pleasure they rejected him. Then God screamed to them in the time of their pain and they heard him. I also know people who fell from a third story building and went to meet their doctor. But you can also go meet the doctor by making an appointment. You don't have to meet God in the sickness. It is true that sickness comes and God helps us to heal but God does not give sickness. He doesn't have any to give. There is no cancer in heaven laying that God gives to people. God can redeem and in cancer he can draw people in just like in many other things but cancer is not his will. Arthritis is not God's will and you have to change tradition thinking in your mind that somehow it is the will of God for me to be sick, it is the will of God for me to be suffering, it is the will of God for me to be in debt, it is the will of God for me to go from paycheck to paycheck, from hand foot to mouth, it is the will of God, it is not the will of God. Just because you have that in your life that doesn't mean that God has a stamp of approval on it. Just because everyone in your family has had that, that doesn't mean it is the purpose and the will of God for your life. You may say but this has brought me closer to God. Yes! Balaam was a prophet and God used a donkey to speak to him. So should we make a doctrine today that God, everybody get a donkey. If you want to hear God, get a donkey. That's foolishness. No. The reason why God used the donkey is because Balaam was deaf to hear from God. God wants to use his word to speak to you. God wants to use the Holy Spirit to draw you in but many times we are deaf and so God will use the foolish things, the evil things as though he will use the devil's weapon. Like David used the sword to kill the, the Goliath. God will use the weapon of the enemy to draw you in but God's choicest tool is his word and his Holy Spirit. It still does not make it from God just because God used it. Somebody say amen. Traditional thinking says money is the root of evil. Bible says love of money is the root of evil. God doesn't care how much money you have. God cares how much money has you. Traditional thinking says Jesus said if you are rich and if you are blessed you will not make to heaven. It's impossible to go to heaven. Actually, Jesus also said that you can't go to heaven being rich or being good. Jesus says good people don't go to heaven. Jesus says only forgiven people go to heaven. 
So either you're poor, you're rich, you're good or bad, we all go to heaven because of the blood of Jesus, not because of our income. Tradition says Jesus was poor and so should you. It is true. Jesus became poor on the cross. In Corinthians it says he became poor that we'll be enriched by his poverty. But Jesus on this earth, he wasn't poor. If you can feed 5,000 men, not women and children included, with two loaves and five bread, five loaves and two, two fish, you're not poor. If on your birthday, wise men, scientists from the East come and they bring gold and they bring frankincense and, 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 and all of the other gifts, you're not poor. If at the age of 30, disciples says, Jesus, where do you live? And they followed him to his house and he wore a garment that was in one piece in that day. That garment in one piece was a very expensive garment that the soldiers had to gamble instead of cut in the half. Buried in a rich man's tomb, had a secretary, people give into his ministry. He wasn't poor. Now he wasn't rolling on a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, but Jesus wasn't broke. And so the tradition begins to feed us with those things that are not right. Some people begin to traditionally be afraid, say, well, I don't want to offend other people. This was my problem, is that being a, a leader at the church, you know, and working at the church, many times I would be afraid to believe that God wants to bless me because if God blesses me, what about people who come to church who don't have that and I don't want to be a stumbling block to their life. And the Holy Spirit dealt with my heart specifically and he said, Vlad, should you also have depression in your life because people come to church are depressed? because your happiness is a stumbling block to them? Should you also have a terrible marriage because people come with broken marriages and your happy marriage is a stumbling block to them? Should you also have a cancer and will come on crutches and a wheelchair all the time? So because people have crutches and people have cancer and people have arthritis? Should you also strive to be on the same level or as a leader you should raise a standard and you should challenge people and you yourself have to live it and encourage people to do the same? If I give you a blessing, I want you to wear it. You know, uh, there's a girl that's in this room that I gave her my jacket. This morning during prayer, I remembered my jacket that I gave to her. And I remembered a thought. She hasn't worn my jacket. During prayer, I said, Lord, I gave her my jacket. It's a nice jacket. I bought it in Ukraine. I paid good money for the jacket. And the Lord, she has not worn my jacket. I hope she didn't throw away my jacket. Man, why did I give her my jacket if she doesn't wear my jacket? I'm praying and thinking about that. And lo and behold, she walks into the sanctuary wearing my jacket joy of the Lord came upon my heart and as I'm rejoicing that she's wearing my jacket the Holy Spirit quietly prompts on my heart he said Vlad if I give you a blessing you make me happy when you wear it don't live for the opinions of other people now and not in any way we promote some excess or anything of that sort but many times when people come to church and they hear me talk about money and there's when they hear me talk about blessing they immediately think oh yeah that's all he wants he just wants the money because he probably gets it from the church for the record last year the amount of money that I received from the church half went back to the church and this year it's going to be all of it probably about all of it this goes back to the church so if you think that I become rich because of our church you're 150 million percent wrong that's just not how it works. God's blessing is greater than that. Why I preach about it is for you and for me. I believe in it and I believe God says you will eat of the good of the land. I believe in that. And traditional thinking says no. Traditional thinking says you should be poor. Traditional thinking says you know what you should never dream high. God's word says otherwise and I want you to believe God's word. Can somebody say amen. Secondly is I want you to enlarge your faith to God's promise stretch your faith with God's promise not with problems of your life stretch your faith with God's promise not with problems in your life stretch your faith means have a faith that is stretched eat of the good of the land there was a time in my in my walk with the Lord where I took this verse and I prayed this verse all day in prayer and then meditated all day and it started to change the way I think because before I grew up in a very traditional mindset when it comes to finances when I wanted something and I couldn't have it my first thought is how can I trim my budget how can I trim my my expenses so that I could you know keep my budget alive and of course sacrifice my dreams that's the way I always lived and I listened to a lot of Dave Ramsey, powerful teaching, powerful things. And then, you know, I limited my faith instead of asking God, say, Lord, I'm going to stay within my budget, but my mind are not going to stay within my budget. My mind is curious. My mind is stretched. My mind believes. My mind says, God, I want to be able to drive in a car that's nice, perhaps German. 
I want to be able to wear clothes that are good, that don't wear out and break every three months. God, I want to be able to live in a place that doesn't smell like cats, you know, and rats and other smelly animals live there, but something that's good. And so what well, the challenge that I had before was this, is that when I wanted something, I looked at my income and I saw my income. I let my income trim my dreams. I let my income determine my faith. But God is saying here, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. God says, let your income and your budget be on one scale. Let your faith be not on your income, but on the promise of God. On the promise of God. God, yes, today I might not have enough in this area, but Lord God, I will eat of the good of the land. I will be blessed and I will eat of the things, wear of the things, drive of the things, live in a place where it's good, not just barely get by. I might not afford it today, but my faith is not there. Don't put your faith where your income is. Don't put your faith where your budget is. Don't put your faith where your relationship status is. Don't put your faith where your symptoms are. Put your faith where the promise of God is. Stretch it. Don't be lazy. I remember a young man that came this year in January and he blessed me with a large sum of money. Um, and he made it into 20s instead of 120 so it looked a lot more than actually it was. Very, very thick envelope and he came and he said, I want you to pray for me. I just wanted to bless you and I want you to pray for me. I prayed for him and uh, he bought a really really nice car has a very very expensive car probably the most expensive car in this room and um, I still owe some money on it and I remember giving him advice afterwards like hey you should get rid of your car get something that you know that you don't owe any money on it and he challenged me with something he said well I like the car and I said well you can change what you like just get something that's within your means he says what if I find a way to increase my income instead of finding a way to get rid of the car. I still have to work on both ways. I can be creative in raising my income or I'd be sacrificial, still creative in reducing my desires. And instead of working two jobs, he quit them both, used some income, started a business and he says, I want to keep my new car and I also want to do a few other things and few other things. And I saw this particular person, he wasn't business person. He was more of a person that he needs to have somebody always tell him what to do. And to see God change in his mind, give him a desire to have a business and him leap out in faith and his mind saying, no, I don't want to just reduce my dreams. I want to increase my income. My mind is not limited to my, to my limitations. My mind is stretched by my faith. It takes the same energy to reduce your budget as it is to increase your income. Except reducing your budget, it doesn't take faith, discipline. But to find other sources of income, it takes stretch of faith. Change your thinking. Stretch your thinking. Don't be a person who's just always limited and who always sees it one way. We can't drink coffee. We can't go out. I can't take you on a date. I can't buy you flowers. We can't afford it. I can't buy you gifts. Why? We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Stop us. Stop saying that say this how can we afford it different question and if right away produces new creative juices holy spirit begins to give you new ideas he won't give you new ideas if you put a ceiling and says i can't that's it amen you will eat of the good of the land is this is too much for sunday morning okay because i feel like some of you are you're completely out of it already I'm, I'm sharing some things that can really really help you and i'm going to finish it and last one is confess change your confession according to God's word. Change your confession according to God's word. In Numbers chapter 14 verse 28 it says, say to them as I live says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing so I will do to you. What do they say? This is what they say. When the man who had gone up with them said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than us. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out saying, the land which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants. All the people who we saw in it are made of men of great stature. We saw giants, descendants of Anak came from the, uh, from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own side. So we were in their side. So these guys go in to see the land God promised to them. Houses they didn't build, wells they didn't dig. Uh, I mean everything, no mortgage. That's like the best part. No mortgage. 
amazing things and you know big houses because did you know why God let giants live in the promised land because giants required big houses so God on purpose let giants build big houses and drove them out and let Israel come and live big houses really cool really cool idea and so God brings them in they look at the land God's been telling about this land for thousands for hundreds of years finally they see it the only thing is they chicken out this is what they say we can't this is too hard no oh my, my brain is hurting no that's not possible I always grew up in this poor wilderness in this poor Egypt that's not gonna happen and God said as you said I will do I made a promise to you but if you're speaking I'm not gonna do it that's not possible do you know what's gonna happen you won't have what God said remember this you will have what you said let me say that again you won't have what God said you will have what you said what do you say do you say I'm sick or do you say I'm healthy fighting sickness do you say my home is broken or do you say I have a blessed home and we're fighting some issues do you say I'm poor or do you say I'm blessed fighting poverty do you say I can't afford it or do you say God is my strength I will have all of my needs provided for change your confession speak new things oh I feel so down I'm so depressed no 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 say I am blessed I am joyful I'm just fighting few little sadnesses on the long side change your confession the words you speak are the material for the Holy Spirit to build the world that you like speak God's word speak what God says let this word you will eat of the good of the land ring in your mind ring in your heart God didn't create you to be like that your neighbor will enter the promised land if they change their confession you will enter your promised land if you change how you speak you may say Vlad that's hypocrisy how do you want me to come around and say these things if I don't feel it if I don't see it if around me everything is contrary well my bible makes me to understand that when you are weak God asks you to say that you are strong God doesn't want you to say what you feel God wants you to say what's going to happen tomorrow God wants you to say what he's going to do change your words you will change your feelings change your words you will inspire your faith change your words you will change your surroundings speak different words you will see words create atmosphere in the house words create atmosphere in your relationships words is what created this world it will create also change your confession not just in prayer where you get all psyched up in prayer Ooh, thank you Jesus and you walk around praise you Lord but in those down moments those times you're discouraged those times you are doing nothing but you're just kind of relaxing those times where your mind is ringing what are you saying change your confession I will eat of the good of the land I am blessed I am prosperous I am victorious I am a free person I'm a healed person I'm a righteous person I am saved person God is on my side he delights in the prosperity of his servants he's El Shaddai not just the God of I'll get by he's the God of more than enough Jehovah Jireh he is Jehovah Ra my shepherd he is Jehovah Nisi my victory he's Jehovah Shalom my peace he is Jehovah Tzitkenu my righteousness he is Jehovah Shama God who is near to me he is my God he will provide for all my needs he says I give you power to get wealth he delights in the prosperity of his servants through him I can do all things who strengthens me without me you can do nothing but with me you can be and bear much fruit Jesus says Jesus says give it shall be given to you press down shaken together man will give into your bosom and you begin to change your confession and you will immediately sense you change your circumstances can somebody say amen church let's come to God when we make mistakes let's be willing and obedient and let's eat of the good of the land the good of the land is here are you going to eat it or are you going to watch someone else eat it and criticize them for it? Stretch your faith today. God wants you to be blessed. You're going to college. You're not going to college so you'll be broke. You're going to college so you'll be prosperous. Stretch your thinking. Maybe you have never owned a car that's debt free. Challenge yourself today to have a car that's debt free. Maybe you've never owned a house. You, nobody in your family owned a house. Everybody always lived on rentals. Raise the bar higher. You will live in a house. Actually raise it a little bit higher. If in the Old Testament people lived in houses that were debt free under the shadow of the redemption. In the New Testament God wants you to also have a house debt free. Maybe you've never given anything more than just $20 gift card. Believe one day you'll give a car and that day might come next year believe that you'll be able to be a blessing to somebody stretch your thinking don't live st 
stuck in your mind don't live limited in your mind because God is limited there stretch yourself you will see God do incredible and mighty and awesome things in your life I'm so proud of our church I see left and right young men guys they're like 19 21 years of age get the job of their dreams and you ask him what is your dream now and he says I'm gonna give my car away I'm gonna get a new one you meet other guys who walk in with the class you know and they're prosperous and you ask them what is their dream he says I have a car that's being fixed I'm gonna give that away and you see in one year probably maybe about seven or eight cars in one year given by young adults in the church guys it's because we teach something faith where you can be stretched it's not just so you will drive fancy it's so you will live in faith and other people will be enriched by your faith in Jesus name somebody say amen Amen.